The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Thursday edition, April the 10th. My pleasure to be here. And uh, let me just see if I got everything set up. Dow's down um, 67 to 16,369 off the fantastic day yesterday, price-wise. S&P's down 12 at 1859, giving back uh, over half of yesterday's gain. And uh, let's see we've, what we've got here. We've got, this is a fascinating market. If you are selectively long, um, there are stocks that are still holding very, very nicely. Uh, the majority of NASDAQ, not the majority, a, a key number of uh, uh, NASDAQ-related stocks had a very nice bounce yesterday and are giving back quite a bit today. Uh, one case, uh, one example is the IBB, the NASDAQ, the Biotechs. And until that one shows some uh, stability and uh, enough strength to be able to sustain a pretty good double digit gain uh, until, I'd say, into two and a half days worth of uh, upside activity. Um, We've got a vulnerability here. A couple of things that we need to do is, let me just uh, switch over to this for a second. A couple of things that we need to do at this particular point is to be very uh, wary and uh, we've got to monitor the VIX, the volatility index, very closely. And um, in this particular instance, the VIX is up. <clears throat> That's the volatility index. I just need to take something to drink here. my English tea, and um, at 14 and a half, the VIX is up 0.76%. You're going to watch that closely. Now, I have a chance. Well, first of all, thank you, Steve Rhodes, for two great hours kicking uh, the TFNN live shows off uh, early in the morning. Uh, it's great to have you, and it's fabulous analysis and fabulous information. Straight off to my show, uh, I'm usually a Monday through Friday on market days, and um, – after me on a Thursday would be Larry Pesavento. I'll be sitting in for Larry today. And a uh, couple of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, in this rotational correction that is ongoing, we have to be careful not to be deceived by momentary strength. That strength has to be, it has to be persevering. It has to encompass uh, um, not just one or two sectors. It has to encompass a number of sectors and a number of stocks that are really important. It has to, at the same time, control um, the parameters. And now what's interesting about the move today is we back under the nine-period exponential moving average that we closed above uh, just yesterday. So the whippiness of this particular move, and I'll show you something that's really interesting. I'm going to go to uh, all the numbers in a moment. I'll move the chart over just a tad so I can see them a little bit better. Uh, if you're looking at uh, Tiger TV, uh, the left side is invariably my, uh, my daily chart. At the very beginning of the show, I always show the E-mini, and the E-mini made a double top at peak C1 at 1867.50 and a peak C2 at 1867.50. Oh, 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 yep, 1867.50. It didn't have the strength to go 25 cents more to give it a peak D. Everything about the MACD and the stochastic says, be careful here on the 120-minute chart. You're doing two things. One is you've just given back the Fed's big expansion from 2 o'clock yesterday, uh, and that was from the 1852.50 level all the way to 18. Uh, 6650. So when you give that back, it says now it's very important to be looking at the rectangle formation. And that says pretty much the base that we've just uh, uh, touched, which is at um, 1851. A little sup of tea here. 
<clears throat> that is going to be very important to hold. Yep, you could dip underneath it, but you better get right back in above uh, 1851. So I just wanted to show you how patterns repeat. And in this particular instance, what we would do, there was a left side, right side price tie match. And that says right there, you're forming the second part of a cup and handle. Not one of my favorite patterns, but nevertheless, that's what we've got. If you're looking at the daily chart of the email, okay, now I'm going to take, out, take the 120-minute chart away and show you. Yesterday's move to the upside was so timely uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that nine-period moving average in the weekly chart of the E-mini was about to be broken. And then it was broken on the downside, and then pop, it came right back up again. So that's going to be very important. 1845 is the level. That's not good enough for me. This trend line support is 1823, 1820. Break 1820 in the next two days. That's going to say, uh-oh, back to that, that phase that now starts to represent very much a bear phase because a bear phase is where rallies lost very briefly. They, are, they invariably take no more than a single day or maybe two days, and then they fail. And we're going to be watching the close today. Very, It's very important. Now, as I said, there, there are pockets of strength, and those pockets of strength are saying to me, how stocks like an Alcoa, uh, United Steel, uh, a couple of others, um, a couple that we have in, in, in our portfolio. We had an amazing thing. We bought a stock yesterday um, almost at the low of the day, and it's, it, it went from 615 to this morning, this morning's high of about 740. That is a huge gain. I don't see how it can gap and stay at that level. I think it's going to give back quite a bit. But it, it's, it's remarkable that if you're able to uh, choose stocks that are looking, very, looking strong, this one we've had many, many, many times, had huge, huge profits in it. So I, I don't really want to give back. I said to just take a tiny little bit off this morning as it was gapping up pre-market because that kind of gain is a gift. But it is unusual in this environment to have earnings come out and then have a favorable reading that actually holds up for two, three days without giving back a chunk. So we're going to be watching this real closely. Now, I need to do a couple of things. And before I do that, I've got a question about Panera. And we'll go to Panera for Sally. But in the meantime, the bank index is down. The Dow is down. It's at 16,382, uh, down 53. The S&P is down 11 at, at 16, uh, 1860. The Comp Index is down 60 at 41.23. Why? Because it has all those biotechs in it. The bio, the IBB is at 227.31, down 7.77. What we've got here, and that, that to me is quite, uh, quite important, is that, as I said, I'm going to go quickly back to the uh, volatility, the VIX index, just to show you the chart. Now, remember, if you're looking at my charts on Tiger TV, this is always the left side is the daily, middle is the weekly, and the right side is the monthly. And all the notations you see on the thousands of charts you have, hand-drawn. That's the way it is. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, uh, the VIX index is rallying here. It's at 14.51, but it is still in under the 200-period uh, the, the moving average. I'm watching this real closely because the weekly chart is yesterday. Um, no, it was on Monday, um, Monday, Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday. The VIX was skyrocketing to the upside and was about to test that resistance uh, level. Oh, I forgot to talk about that a moment ago. That resistance that's called the inside track in the Chapman wave, that is a repellent zone. Let me just quickly talk about it. I'm going to jump there for a moment. You know, you know me, I've got to jump to the charts that are on my mind. Otherwise, I forget about them. And it's a pity because those are the charts that I, I really want to enumerate on. Look at this. The, the, what I've, I've designed something that is so simple. If you use it in your technique, Whatever technique you have, I don't care what the technique is, but if you learn to add it to that technique, you will find that it really gives you a sense. It's two, one line, maybe two lines. It just gives you a sense of parameters. And what I drew here is that gray line. I usually make it a green line, so I'm going to make it a green line for now. And that pinky red line, that's called the inside track in the Chapman wave. Why? Because it defines and outlines for you very simply, very. I'm a visual person, very visually, 
it outlines for you the the resistance or repellent zone. So, when you are looking at um, this particular uh, zone, that means that the S&P, which went real close today, it went up to 1867.50, but it had to go to 1868.75 or higher to get into that zone. And the upside, the breakout, would be any time it breaks above 1874. That's the E-mini futures. So now let's run this again. Uh, we've got we've got gold at uh, this particular point. Let me go to the GCM contract, the June contract. Gold is acting very well. Oh, it's still acting very well. In leg C, uh, we missed by one penny getting a particular stock that we want, a low price stock, and um, that low price stock would have gone from 113 and hit 114, and then this morning it was up at 120, 123. Well, you know. We, we got one by a penny yesterday, which worked for us. So uh, it evens out in the end. As much as I can get upset, I, I, I just take this as, in, as, as a grain of salt. It just That's the way it is. But I have to now put in an up arrow. That means that gold daily contract is in a buy mode, and that should go to at least a D. 13.31 is the 200-period exponential moving average, and in a sense, the 13.28 to 13.32 area would be a target of mine in the V-shaped pattern that, that's forming. MACD is good. It hasn't crossed positive, and the stochastic is good. So, yes, and there's tremendous support at the 13. What am I looking at? Yeah, maybe the 13, 13 area. Um, 1315 to 1313. Uh, silver is down. Oh, sorry, silver is up 40 cents at 20.17. High grade copper is still stuck around three. It hasn't been able to break up or break down, so that's okay. Dollar is down a little. It's down uh, six cents at 79.42. And what am I looking at? Yeah, I'm looking at bonds up 22 30 seconds. Now I'm just going to do this with a TLT because 110.40 starts leg D. In the daily, it starts leg C in the weekly. So bonds are acting quite well. Uh, still within the trading range, but they are starting to turn that 200 period moving. The, you know, the big fuss I always make about a 200 period moving average. You can ignore it, and then out of the blue, it becomes your focus. So that's, uh, that's what I'm looking at. I'm going to go to John in Jupiter, Florida. Hi, John. How are you? Doing great, Basil. And you? I'm doing well. Thank you. And calling back on RWM. Okay, and you still have week. a long position in it, right? I do. I was wondering if I should add or not. Since, okay, uh, this with is what's a, going on today. This is actually a, a difficult a decision for me, only because the IWM, which is the Russell 2000, and this is the R um, RWM. This is the ProShare Short Russell 2000. Um, is in leg it's made a peak t you know what give me a moment here to look at it during the break and i'll be right back and give you a response okay thank you for holding down down 61 is down 12. if you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. We're back with John in Jupiter, Florida. We're looking at RWM. I actually, on my screen right now, what you'll see is the IWM. Now, what's really important about the IWM is that the candle that we're looking at from March, uh, is it March? That's we, yes, from March of... Uh, 2014 is that doji candle. Um, normally, I would say it's a long-legged doji candle, but this has been such a straight-up move that, in fact, I'm just calling it a doji for now. And normally what I would say is that this kind of candle, you would retest the body of the candle. That would be the closing price of 116.34. Um, we've kind of done that testing already. The most important thing right now is that the 110.80 not very far, just three points lower. Today, we're already down 2.21. That's going to be key for support in this particular index. And if that gets taken out, we'll be looking at the body of the candle of Jan... of February. Of February, and that wick is going to be at about 109.50. So if that gets taken out, I anticipate that you will go down and test the low of 107.27. The only thing that would have changed that for me in the IWM is if there was a doji candle or better today on the upside, and in fact it got into the body of the candle of um, that's the candle of the fourth of of uh, April. Yes, April, and we were seeing the IBB start to rally strongly now. Now, one of the things about the IBB. Now, I suspect, uh, John, you might be a in a position to be, to be able to do this with the um, with the RWM, which is, this is one-to-one -one short the IWM, correct? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to make the suggestion here that even though it's really close to 112.08, uh, 
probably just before we went to the break, I should have said yes because it's already dropped about uh, 50, 60 cents since we spoke, <laughs> that you could add another position that you might want to consider a trading position to be able to keep your core position as long as possible. That's kind of what I've done with the um, IBB. Got a short position from just a few points off the all-time high and just want to keep that as a short. And I, I'm prepared to trade the long side, short side. We just traded the long side for about a point profit. It actually was a nine-point profit, but it gap it, it down it was very weak today. So it took, it took a, just a very small gain. I'm prepared to go in and out of that. So my preference would have been... Had I known that we were going to gap down like this and actually continue down in the in the um, IWM, was to say, if you were going to add at all, then the perfect place would have been at the close yesterday or at the open today. But why? Because the nine-period exponential moving average was right there. At the close yesterday on, on the RWM was 1666, and the... Um, Nine period exponential moving average was at about um, 16.68. Now that's jumped up to 1674. My only question here is that there's a good chance that we're going to go to either an E in the, in the daily chart, and that should start some kind of a consolidation. So it's at 17 right now. I, I don't want to tell you not to, not to do this except... And it's only about 34 cents, 36 cents, really, the big difference that we're talking about. And if, if correct, what we're looking at is that the RWM will test 1775, which would be the nine-period moving average in the monthly chart. So here's my suggestion. Um, right here, it's, to make a difference and say, you know, why don't you wait a little bit for a pullback, 10 cents, 15 cents. I don't think that's the, that's the issue right now because if if – the IWM, if the, if the Dow gives back a huge chunk of yesterday's gain, the S&P already is giving back a, a big part of the gain. That's more bearish action. That, that's closer to what right. we, um, yeah. we normally ex I normally expect when, I, when we've gone from a sell signal to a sell mode and then the weekly chart goes from a sell signal to a sell mode in, in, in many of the indexes, then I'm expecting bearishness to say, Rallies cannot last more than a day or a day and a half. So if you want to start a position now, it would be with a little bit more risk. I don't know how much risk you want to take. My sense is that even if there's a, a, a bounce from here, that it won't go much lower than 16.62. So that's like 45 cents. But what we're really looking for is a chance that this 17.01 can really push quickly towards the 1775 level, which is the nine-period moving average of the monthly chart. So I'm going to suggest if you are going to add to your position, which is already a good position, I don't want you to negate that position by, by getting it a little too close to where it could start to turn around. But I'm going to say if you buy some here, buy less than you would have if it was early this morning or yesterday with a better risk-reward. So I'm going to suggest, yes, you okay. can add a little small position, Let's see how that goes. Give me a call maybe Wednesday, and we'll see how we can negotiate around that. I hope that helps you, John. Very much so. Thank you. Thank you. And as I say, the target is... In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full-month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. 
And he publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. We're back. Dow's down 74, S&P's down 15. And uh, we're going to go straight to uh, Florida, back to Florida, uh, for Nahid in Safety Harbor. Hi, Nahid. How are you? Very good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Can I please look at SAVE? I did a, um, I have a put for May, but doesn't look good. <laughs> ah, no, no, no. I'm not sure that about that. Uh, you have chosen one of the very strongest of the Spirit Airlines, SAVE is a symbol, at 5807, down a dollar fourteen. Yes, you have chosen one of the, one of the strong ones, but when I look at the XAL, which is the um, airline index, a XAL, there it is, it's made a peak G uh, with a silent doji top uh, back at 83, oh, 83 round number high. Let me put that in 83. I can't believe how many um, round numbers we're looking at. So that corresponds, let me just, I don't like to uh, skip something. Yep, that corresponds with the weekly. And this is an, this is an index to make a round number high. Wow. So I've got to keep that in mind because a move above 83 in the uh, ARCA airline index would be a positive. But you see the little candle that's forming here um, in the, at 80.10 where we are in the, in the XAL. That candle is in leg F. That's the way I'm counting it for now. I don't see any other thing that I can do. Is to, I, yep, there might have been an instant restart, but for now at least I'm calling it an F. And now, if you look at the different airlines, AAAL, which is American Airlines, um, made, a, um, made a high of peak D back uh, around about the 10th or so of March. I went to a, um, a peak D in the weekly, possible peak F, and still it's holding well. 
But when I put it together with the one that you're looking at, S-A-V-E, I'm saying to myself, this is a very critical uh, period for the airlines and the airline stocks. First of all, they have squeezed to death just about every single square inch of every plane and yeah. the passengers involved. Now, I don't know if you've flown lately, but, but it ain't a pleasant <laughs> experience. It's terrible. That's number one. Secondly, I couldn't tell you how many times people have told me that they've been delayed. I was delayed twice on, on a flight just recently. Um, and I'm looking at this, I'm saying to myself, wow, the public at some point is going to turn around and say, you know what, I don't think it's really worth it, and they're going to make a big deal. And I don't know how that's going to affect the airlines, but in the meantime, they are squeezing you for every single thing. Even, even I read American Airlines now is going to change their uh, policy for your, your points that you have uh, on American Airlines to make it more difficult to get those points. So yeah. this is what they're doing. That's a complete reversal of what was happening just a few years ago. So when I look at SAVE, Spirit Airlines, and I've been on Spirit, I actually quite like them, although they are a real low-cost low cutter, and uh, I, I've had quite nice service with them. But that's just one incident, it's anecdotal. I'm looking at the chart, and I'm saying, yeah, it's held very well. I, all I can say to you is that I would not be holding the put if it was, if the, if, um, save trading at 58.11 at any point pops up to the you know I don't wait I don't want to wait for the high bar that I'd be looking at of 16 62.92 I would just say that if it gets into the body of the candle of the 4th of April if it gets anywhere into the 60.90 area no 60.70 area what I would be doing is I'd be looking at the put and I'd be saying, how has the premium shrunk from where I got it? And if the premium is still quite good, I'd give it just another little bit of time, but I wouldn't want to see it to the uh, 60, 60, no, 61.50s or 62 area. I would say, you know what, I can always come back to that put position I don't want to take more heat than that. And that, I think, right. would be for you about the greatest percentage risk that you'd be taking is to say, right now you're okay with the put, right? No, actually, I'm not. I'm down. Oh, oh you just got it. No, I got it, uh, I think, a week ago, maybe, a few days ago, maybe. Oh, really? Um, Interesting. Huh. All right, so it's starting to lose pre a lot quicker than I would have thought. Yeah. This is May, huh? I am down, yes. <laughs> okay, all right, then I have to change. All right, then I'm going to do something else. Now, I don't think it's worth taking too much risk in the one of the best airlines that, the, uh, that there is. So I'm going to suggest to you a bounce back to the nine-period moving average of 59.03. I would say, I, I don't know if you've got a bunch, but if you've got a bunch, I would definitely take off half of that position. Okay. And the reason why I say half is... In this environment right now, I can see a little bit of a bounce. It tried to bounce this morning. It couldn't hold it. It's at the low of the day. The MACD, though, is very poor, and the stochastic's very poor yeah. in the daily chart. The weekly chart, I'd have to wait for tomorrow, at fri Friday at fi uh, 4, 4 o'clock, to see where it closes. Stochastic has turned down. On balance volume is making a double top, but the MACD's fast-moving average is the, is the one thing that's still showing internal strength. So I, I would say to you, there's a chance that you could have a much better position if you kept your loss very tight because okay. you'll have another you'll have the capital to come back again uh, a little later on. I would also suggest to you that um, in looking at the different airlines we oh I had it right in front of me here it is. Let me just for one second if you don't mind I'm just going to run through the different airlines. You see okay. Love LUV uh, Southwest Airlines I tried counting it umpteen different ways. I still cannot get anything but a leg C. And the weekly has either recycled, or I've got it as a G, a smooth G. That means it goes to G within three bars of making F. But the daily chart, just like, just like the other airlines I'm talking about, the daily chart is saying, well, I'm really struggling to hold gains. Um, so that's LUV. I wanted to also look at ALK, which is Alaska, I believe, Alaska Airlines. Yeah, leg E in the upside um, in the monthly, 
This is very interesting because I haven't updated it, but you know what happened? It's gone to leg D in the weekly. And if I can take one set and an F in the in the daily, but it's holding the other top. Yes, I'm gonna stay with my with my little thesis there. That if if uh we're looking at um S A V E. Yes, if, if S A V E oops, I wrote typed it in the wrong place. I just want to run those numbers again so that we're absolutely clear. Manages within two to three days to climb above 59.03, the nine period exponential moving average. I would definitely take off some of it, and I would I, I wouldn't mess around because I would want to see the check the other airlines if they also rallying. That says they're not quite done yet. And that's based on that fast moving average of the weekly chart that is still quite strong, and the monthly is still quite strong. I would like for you to see save quickly go to 57.40 or lower by the end of the day or tomorrow. If it does that, then I'm going to say to you, you stay in the position, and then you can continue to use that 59.04 as where you would take off some of your position. Hope that helps you. Yes, it does. What did you say about the ALK? Is that What leg is that? And ALK is in, um, that's made a peak F top in the, in the daily, and it's made a D, well, we haven't finished the week, but so far it looks like it's making a D, potential D in, in the weekly, and the monthly is in leg E, but everything about it is still showing enough internal strength. To, I would not be shorting this one. Okay. So I'm looking at a cer certain airlines that are holding very well. Yeah, because Yours, I, yeah. in the weekly okay. chart and the monthly chart, the technicals are still good. Okay. Thank you so much, Basil. I do Thanks very much for calling. I had always great to hear from you. Let's go to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, how are you? Good morning, Basil. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm calling today about uh, either natural gas or the UNG. Okay, so have... UNG folks, when, when, when UNG made that, that right arm extension in the Chapman Wave to a peak at E in the daily at 27.89, what I had said is, I believe that it's done for now, and I don't know how, you, uh, how natural gas works itself out over the summertime. And my guess was that it had made a, um, some kind of a top of consequence. Well, it did pull back to 2371. UNG is the United States Natural Gas Fund. It's an ETN, I believe. Um, so the, that's the notes, not the actual stock. And it's in leg C in this counter trend rally. Um, and this counter trend rally, I have to consider it to be a very important harbinger of the weekly chart because. It's, are you long or short? What's your position? I'm long with some uh, actually May $25 calls. Okay. Because you're in the call position, what is today, Thursday? Because you're in the call position, I'm going to have a slightly different outlook. The weekly chart is the most important chart that I'm looking at. And I'm going to make suggestions here that I, you don't... You don't actually have to do it right away, but it's something that I'd like you to keep in mind over the next few days. I would probably say to you that if UNG, which is trading at 25.94 with a uh, up 49 cents with a high today of 26.19, if it breaks above 26.45, that's the candle of the 25th of February, then it's going to try to tackle this very ugly candle where it made peak E. That you remember that day that it had a spectacular, it moved up and then whoops, it came all the way back down. That was on the 24th of February. I don't think it's going to make its way to more than about 26.50 to 26, 26.30 to 26.50. That's going to be key because if it goes into the 27s, I have to consider it's going to try to retest the high. My thinking is that if it goes above today's high, I would have my finger on the trigger to take something off. Then keep your core position. Why? Because the weekly chart has the potential to make a U-shaped pattern, but that... The, the quickness of the down move and the quickness of the up move has to continue. If it stalls at any point, the weekly chart stalls, as I think it's going to, then you're going to get the M pattern in the MACD to be lower on the right side, and the stochastic is only at 62%. Now, what is very impressive longer term is that the weekly chart has started the second H pattern. It's almost like a channel. So all I can say to you is that, I would consider lightening up on my, put on my call position 
if you take out today's high, if it takes it out and see, that's good. Don't do anything. Wait for a pullback, and then leg D would be where I would take something off. I'd actually take quite a bit off and leave a core position. But at this particular point, you're getting a potential squash in the stochastic and the MACD, and that says don't do anything right now because so far it's actually acting very, very well. I'm just going to grab the 120-minute chart. Um, this is leg A, so peak A, B, C, D, E. Yep, this is a very strong leg F. I, I, I'm thinking that we're real close to some kind of consolidation, a little higher to 26, 22-ish, somewhere around there, and then a pullback. And it could pull back all the way to 25.54. And that's the reason why I'm saying you're very close to where I would consider starting to take at least something off and keeping your core position. If it's going to fail, it's going to break 25. You know how quickly uh, natural gas moves. It'll gap down and go under 25.09 real quickly. So that's the reason why I'm saying try to keep your finger on the right there to be able to, to be able to be in control of, the, of, of your own destiny in the sense that because you've got a, not the, the long position, but you've got a, an option position, premium can shrink really quickly. So I would rather you take premium out, of, take the profit out of it with premium expanding than contracting. That's all. So I hope that helps you. It does very much, Baz. I appreciate it. You have a great day. Huh? You too. Thank you very much for calling, Brad. Let's go to Andy in Lafayette, Colorado. Hi, Andy. How are you? Doing great, Basil. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, just looking at Verizon and looking to get back in, and the chart just looks really, really interesting, especially with that spike um, volume on February 24th. Yeah, this is, a, this is, folks, we're looking at VZ, which is Verizon Communications, and I have to tell you something. People keep coming back to this because it is, in fact, one of the, one of the really good dividend-paying stocks. I've been watching it real closely because... If it had to break, Verizon trading at 48.25 right now, 27 cents. If this darn thing had to break 45.08, which it was so close to doing back in the week of the 21st of, of February, I would have said, oh, no, now it's going to go all the way back to the 42, uh, 44 to 42 area um, where the 200 period moving average is. So it keeps coming back. Um, I'm thinking it's in a trading range. It's in the... Hmm, is it in the upper? Yeah. So let me just do a notation on this. So this goes real quickly to an A and then a B minus. It pulls back very sharply and then it goes A to B to C to D to E. Hmm. So this is at E in the daily. MACD is good. Stochastic is good. So you don't have it. And this is a stock that you've been in, so you know it very, very well. You see, I like to look at dividend stocks if they're going to give me capital gains as well. I don't want to buy capital. I don't want to get 3 4% dividend when I'm losing 7 or 10% on my capital. So what I'm going to suggest to you is, um, I was going to say start a, yes, I, 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 my mind. Let me just take the, the, the Andy, I want to look at that. And then I'll be doing, we'll be doing, uh, Larry shows straight off to this. Hold on, Andy. I might just bite just a little bit and then end. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We are back. We're looking at Verizon. We're looking at Verizon uh, for Andy and Lafayette, uh, Carada. And here's my suggestion. Oh, and just in the time that we were talking, it's pulled back. I'm going to make the suggestion that says I think Verizon is going to pull back a little bit from here. Normally, if pulling back a little bit in a, in a dividend stock that I feel is going to make higher highs, I would say I don't really care about the 30 cents or 20 or whatever it is. Um, just use, you, this is something to buy. Instead, what I'm going to make the suggestion is, Andy, you're, re, you're really looking at this as a potential buy and hold. Am I correct? Uh, is Andy there? Uh, I'm not sure. Well, I hope Andy is listening because I wanted to do this for Andy. So what I'm going to make the suggestion of, uh, Andy, is that if you want, you could just nibble on it right here. I'm actually going to do something a little differently because I think this really is an E with a very strong technical, so maybe it's going to recycle, maybe it'll just consolidate sideways. I would prefer to see you get, buy it on a pullback. If you want to just nibble at it at 48.19, it would just be the smallest position just to get a feel for the stock. I like the weekly chart is starting to improve. My preference is really to get it in the 47.50 area. Now, 50 cents in a stock that, you know, uh, that has the potential to move higher as the market goes uh, weaker and they go for dividend stocks, safety stocks. So all I'm going to say is, I would start a position. If it was me, I'd have try to have the patience to start a position at 47.50. What I really want is for to see how the candle 47.20, the candle of the 1st of April, holds. If that holds really well, 
if it actually gets there and holds well, then I'm going to be looking at this as a potential buy. Why? Because then I know that I've got a good uh, uh, 2 to 3% in capital gains if it starts to move upside and breaks the, uh, the high. And at the same time, I'm getting the dividend yield. But I'm a little, I'm, I, I'm just a little cautious about doing anything other than nibbling right here. My preference is to go for the 4750s to 4710 area. That's where I would start a position. Hope that helps you. Sean in Hudson. Hi, Sean. How are you? Am I getting Sean in Hudson, New Hampshire? Maybe there's a bit of a delay. Um, all right, let me just do this. I'm going to suggest that uh, I, the question is, uh, just jump in and say, I'm here. But in the meantime, I'm going to say, you want to, you're you looking at Sprint. We have I'm Sprint. I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, hi, Sean. Do you have Sprint already? I own, I bought it yesterday. I'm not ah, there. you bought it yesterday, so you were very pleased to see the spike. You know, the spike this morning looked like a kind of a news-related something or other. I. If you bought it yesterday, all I'm going to say to you is, I would not, I, if it takes out the lower of yesterday, that uh, of two days ago, three days ago, 80, 80, 8.71, I would, I would say, be careful, make your position much smaller. But I would actually put a stop. If if Sprint, it has a funny way of moving suddenly, but that's up and down. And my the weekly chart says to me, there's still some internal weakness. I'm a little concerned. So if you got in yesterday, um, okay, you're asking my opinion. If Sprint takes out today's low of 80.80 .80 any day in the next couple of days, I'm going to say to you I would make that position much smaller, number one. And if it took out the low of four days, three days ago of 871, closed under 871, I would be out of the position. Why? I think it's making the capital A straight up and down situation because if it takes out 870 if it goes to 860s there's a real good chance it's going to start to test the 850 840 area so i'm a little cautious and i also you know i i got a feeling from the action just recently that i well, i, I was, think i, I would like to look at sprint if it makes a nice base in the 850 to 840 area and i'm going to just try to have patience for that so that's my stance, and we've been in Sprint a couple of times. I'm out of it now, and I'm actually feeling like I think it has limited upside. So I hope that helps you, Sean. Uh, hey, can I hold on for the next break? Because I got a Oh, absolutely. I'm Folks, break. I'm coming back. I'm doing Larry Pesavento's show, and I'm sorry that I didn't get to Panera. I didn't get to Panera because of the questions for Sally. But, Sally, if you can hold on, I want to do Panera because I think you're in. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.